Welcome. Today is part 12 of the Telecaster Luthier Student Build. And today we're going to work on the dry fit of basically the hardware. So we're going to have a couple tuners on the guitar in order to put a couple strings on there. I've got just a, a mock nut with a couple notches in it for the high and low E strings. I've got a high and low E string itself. I've got my pick guard. I've got my control plate. I've got my bridge in place with the pickups. Now the pickups in this case don't matter near as much. If you have pickups with uh, poles in them, you definitely want the pickups installed uh, because part of what we're gonna do is line up those pole pieces so they're equally um, aligned with each of the strings on the high and low E side. And of course we need the Yeti cup. And just in case we have issues, we need one hammer, the maximum Thor hammer. Hopefully it doesn't come to that stage. But the most tricky part that we're gonna need, I should say tool that we're gonna need for this setup is this, a block of wood. Now this block of wood just happens to have a notch cut out in it so that I am going to use this over top of my bridge in order to clamp the bridge in place without any screws so that I can string it up with the two outer strings and get the alignment exactly where I need it to be prior to taking my hole punch and marking the outer screw mounting locations of the bridge. Now obviously, if you have different hardware, your, your procedures may vary a little bit. For instance, this is not a string through body design bridge. So therefore, my ball ends can go right in the back over top the outer portions of those uh, barrel saddles and it'll work fine. If you have a string through design, then you're either gonna have to commit to drilling a couple holes through the body, or you're gonna have to figure out a way to mount them outside of that. For instance, let's say this did not mount in the back. Um, I could very easily make this block of wood be more T-shaped, and the T-shape coming out here, I can drill a couple holes and uh, slide my strings through those holes just to hold them in place temporarily while I rest them on the saddles and line them up along the neck. So you gotta get creative with this, but my goal in this operation, especially when I'm building a one-off, now I know this is a Telecaster and I'm doing it from templates, but I've never built it from these templates before. I'm doing it for the school, um, the Luthier program that I'm teaching a, a basic guitar, electric guitar building class and I'm requiring that they build a Stratocaster Telecaster. So basically I had the school purchase pre-made plans uh, for these. And so therefore there's gonna be a little bit of tweaking. I'm not familiar with how the holes are lined up or how everything came together. Uh, so my goal, again, is to not drill any holes mounting things until I've verified. Now, the one thing I will also mention at one step of a previous part of this series, I went ahead and took a straight edge and laid it on either side of, of this. Uh, I laid it on either side of this neck and I figured out where the absolute center line was based upon the neck. If a straight edge is on either side of the neck and I draw a line on either side of the neck and I measure at a couple points in that span the distance and divide that in two, that becomes my center line. And it should be exactly what the center line was all along, but sometimes the way necks are inserted in the pocket, the way the pocket is done, the neck, uh, the center line actually shifts ever so slightly and that was our time to correct it. So I'm pretty confident since I did that on this particular guitar that my center line here is 
my center line. So I can use that certainly as a gauge, but ultimately I could have a center line dead center on that center line and be proud of how center that center line is. But if the strings do not line up to the proper position and parallel to the edge of that neck, then what's it really good for? Okay, so we may have to adjust ever so slightly in order to get the lay of the strings to work out absolutely perfect. So this is what we're gonna accomplish here. Now let me show you another jig. This jig comes from a company actually based here in Colorado called luthiersuppliers.com. And it's just an acrylic template with two adjustable, I don't know, posts that come down in two different locations. And the idea with this is I can place this on the neck. Now let's take my temporary nut and I will slide that right into place. And I take this jig and I slide it up against and then I simply compress these pins so it encapsules. So it encapsules, so it's basically touching the neck. Uh, on either side and I tighten that down and I do that twice and what that does is that forces an alignment point of the neck to stretch out all the way down and if I look at my center line running on the top of this guitar I have just validated that my center line is the center line based upon the positioning of the neck so that's another way that we can do it. Uh, Tracy, uh, the owner of this company that makes this jig um, really is an awesome individual and used to actually help teach at the school that I'm, I'm currently teaching the electric guitar building class. So uh, there's a little history way back with the organization uh, that I'm teaching at. So let's go ahead and mount a couple tuners. Now these aren't the tuners that I'm going to use. They're the same brand, uh, but I'm going to have chrome hardware on this. But it doesn't really matter at this point. So I'm just gonna place these guys on there. They just happen to be uh, two tuners that I had randomly available. And I'm not drilling any pilot holes yet. So I'm just gonna put a little extra pressure down. I used to always tighten these nuts down with just a little, little tiny adjustable wrench and sometimes it would slip and scratch either the nut or the wood and I kind of got tired of that so I finally did get around to ordering a 10 millimeter T-wrench I guess that's what you call it uh, from Stu Mac and um, so much easier well worth uh, the investment there for sure okay now I'm going to place the pick guard I'm going to place a mocked up control plate I haven't totally decided on the configuration of the knobs so don't start getting all excited about that but I I do believe though one of my additional features I'm gonna have a knob out on the end for one of these additional features that I plan on wiring up so I think that's gonna be pretty cool anyway we don't need that for now now we'll take our bridge and we'll just drop it naturally where it falls in here and that'll be the beginning of the start point. So the first thing I'm gonna to have to do is clamp this into place. I think to make it easier to work around, I'm just gonna put it in the, uh, the vise there, and that way I can work on both sides, top and bottom. All right, I got you moved into a different position now so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Everything is installed, uh, laying in the proper place, but but loose. Now I did tighten down my uh, Baltic birch plywood clamping mechanism on the backside. And that's just holding that, that rear part of that bridge tight. And once I clamp it down, because it's elevated um, on the front side, it applies a downward pressure. And I, I really can't move that hardly at all. So this is a good starting point. I'm going to string up the bass and the treble E strings. Okay, now that I have both high and low E strings on there, now you don't have to tighten them to pitch, 
okay? Because I'm not sure how hard this clamp, how much force this clamp can actually hold back. Um, so anyway, I just tighten them just enough where I have string tension where I know that they're taut. You know, at least enough tension where I know they're going to be straight, okay? Um, now I've got that set up. I've tried to adjust my mock neck. Now, it probably doesn't have the exact spacing that I want because every neck varies in thickness just a little tiny bit, uh, but it's pretty close and I just make sure it's centered so I have approximately equal spacing on the left and the right side or the base and the treble side of, of the nut. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand back here and look to see if it travels down that down that neck perfectly, okay? And kind of parallel to the edge, or at least consistent spacing left and right, okay? So, and I also make sure my barrel saddles are fairly straight because without two strings on each saddle, uh, it, it could cock one way or the other. So I try to make sure that they're as straight as I can, as I can visually see. And now I'm looking right down this neck and I can see that we have a really nice alignment. I'm gonna give you a close up to what I'm looking at here. Let's try to see if I can get that perfectly at the bridge area. I don't know if I if, if I shift that this camera one way or the other, it may appear to be off, but I'm looking for that parallel lines, basically from the edges of the fretboard all the way down. Now the secondary thing I'm gonna start looking at is the bridge itself. I want the string spacing to be right where it needs to be, and honestly, it already is. It Each string is right on the edge of the uh, magnet bar going across the top of those pickups. So I'm pretty happy with that spacing. You can kind of see my saddles are pretty straight there. So everything is, is looking pretty nice. I like what I see. The other thing I can double check is I measured the center line of the bridge, which you probably saw in that close up, with a little orange piece of tape and I put a pencil line there and there's a gap between the pick guard and my bridge plate and I can see where those two lines match up. So that's kind of, that's not the critical thing, but that's just validating to me that you know what, what I'm seeing with my naked eye and that alignment is confirmed by the bridge being located at the exact center position. Now the other thing we wanna check is to make sure we are at our 25.5 inch scale. Uh, hopefully we do, because now that everything is set up and looking nice, I don't wanna have to change anything. But we can take a ruler and measure it from the inside, okay, the closest side of the nut, to the break point of the saddle. And I've got, to that break point, I've got 25 and 3 eighths. Okay, it's a 25.5 inch scale. So, do we need to slide back an eighth of an inch? No. The reason why is I've extended that saddle as far as it can go out. And then, then if I place that break line at 25 and 3 eighths, I have up to an eighth of an inch that I can go past the 25.5 scale, tighter than the 25.5 scale, in order to do a little bit of, of compensation for the high E string. So I like to leave an eighth of an inch forward adjustability on that one saddle. And to me, that drives everything else because there's plenty of room for all the other ones to come back to set that proper intonation point later on. So that's exactly where I want it to be also. So I am gonna go ahead and mark these spots. I can take a sharp pencil and hit my out two, outer two lines there. That kind of helps me. But really, I am going to take a punch and locate it into the center of that hole. And make sure that I mark that really good. 
Another tool that is pretty handy is this little guy. This is kind of a center finding drill, drill bit. And so because these, these bridge holes have a taper, kind of a, a chamfer, a countersink as it were, to the metal plate, this will line up perfectly in the center. And I can take that and I can just start the hole And I know the placement of that hole will be perfect. That's another good trick to use. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and drive those screws. Now, a nice thing about driving those two screws before you move anything is if something were to mysteriously shift, there is a way to kind of re-engage this and get to the other two screws holding that plate on and use those as solid holes and then plug these and re-drill them so that you have good, fresh holes. But this has stayed nice, nice and perfect. So now, while I've got all of this in place, I'm gonna take another peek at the pick guard alignment. I want that pick guard to be as centered as possible over here and as equal distance from the edges. And it looks very good to me right there. And I'm also at this point gonna double check that with that position in place, that my control plate is gonna cover up the recess and it looks like that does. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark some of my holes here. I'm gonna go ahead and mark, now that I have the alignment good on those hole punches, I'm gonna mark the control plate. Perfectly centered, perfectly centered down there. So there we have it. We have all the holes lined up to where we need to be. I'll probably go ahead and drill those holes out and mount the pick guard and mount this with screw holes so that I've got everything right where I need it to be. And then once my finish is applied, I'll still have those holes there. I know right where everything is gonna go. Let's go ahead and take this off. And now that I've validated my alignment, I'm gonna go ahead and set the remaining two screws on the bridge. And we'll give you one more close up. We can see that spacing between the bridge and the pickguard is nice. Between the control plate and the pick guard is perfect. The alignment, perfect, no gap. Around here, good fit. Screws all planted, distance looks pretty symmetrical. Strings still look converging, uh, very parallel. All the way up to my mock nut. This hasn't even had the frets done yet. Sounding pretty good, at least on, on two strings. So here we have it. This is, prior to finishing, this is the dry fit process that I do for one-off guitars, uh, just to make sure that everything is fastened exactly how it needs to be, so we don't have to fidget with it after the finish has been applied. And this then will mount, it'll be good. We'll be able to do the final leveling and crowning to the frets and set our nut in place um, and wire everything up. And this will be one awesome playing guitar for sure. That's it for part number 12 of the Telecaster Student Build series. So remember, 
no matter what you do, start with excellence. <laughs>